Have you ever had a deck of cards that look like that? Look at this. You got the E card, the I card, Pi, 1, and 0. Hmm. I wonder what that is. Uh, full house, maybe? Um, I don't know. I'm not a card player, but uh, pretty sure those cards they don't look familiar, especially that E one. So that's what this objective is about, um, is being able to define this number, this E. It's an irrational number and then use it as a base of exponential functions, so graphing and some, some finance stuff and exponential growth and decay, that kind of stuff. And those letters, those specific letters, they're on there for a reason, and you're going to see it like, tattooed on somebody, too. All right, well, let, let's see what this is all about. Okay, so here we're going to start off with a problem that uh, I think was first looked at by one of the Bernoulli brothers, math, physics, whatever. And um, so this is what I was saying. I, I take a dollar. That's all I got. I just got a dollar. But the bank account that I'm going to put that in, they, they're offering me 100% interest. Okay? So uh, that's pretty crazy. But that's the situation for this problem. So how much money are you going to have in that account if the interest is compounded only once or twice or three times or four times or daily or whatever? So is that amount, is that dollar amount going to increase without bound? Is it going to just get exponentially bigger and never ever stop? Or is there something that it's going to stop at? That's what we want to know, okay? So uh, how much money is going to be in that bank account after that first year? So uh, basically we're using that same um, compound interest equation. My initial amount right there is one dollar and in parentheses I got one plus one over, uh, the one is because it's 100%, right? 100%, and let's move the decimal place, it's just one, okay. Uh, number of compoundings raised to the n power, and so we're just gonna fill out this little table and see what's going on, see if there's any kind of pattern here. So, if I compound this once, uh, let's say I put one in there, so that's one over one, that's two. Two to the first power is two times one, of course, I, I just got two dollars. All right, I, I doubled my money, that's pretty nice. That makes sense. All right, how about if I put, uh, if, I, if I compound it twice? So if I put a two in there, now I'm up to $2.25. So just an additional compounding that just earned me an extra 25 cents. That's, that's nice, okay. I mean, if I only had a dollar to begin with, that's, that's, uh, that's big money. Okay, how about if we did it four times? So we did it quarterly, or the bank decided to. Now I'm up to two dollars and forty four cents oh well this time I only went up by nineteen that's well that's a little disappointing okay how about if they did it um, monthly so n is twelve so I plug twelve into the formula I got two dollars and sixty one cents I only went up by seventeen man I compounded it uh, like three three times as much well okay what about if I compounded every single day 365. That's got to be pretty big, right? Oh, man, that only went up by uh, 10 cents there. 10 cents. Okay, so what if I did it every hour? If I, if I compounded every single hour, remember that's that 365 times 24, 8,760. Plug that into the formula and I get $2.72. One penny more than I got before. And there's there's this brick wall, there's the limit that I just hit. I can't get any more money from that investment at that bank account. And uh, that's a very special number here. Let's, let's look at this on a graph here. So uh, it's, that's the equation graphed. And um, it, it looks like it's tapering off, right? It looks like it's approaching some sort of line and, and that line is the value of that account. And that value of that account, what we're trying to get to is uh, $2.72. Now actually, you can see that even at the end of that graph, past the, the 15, it's not quite there. And that's because, you know, asymptotes, they never quite get there. Now our dollar amount, though, is going to stop because it doesn't matter what the decimals after uh, the nearest penny is. Um, that's n always going to round to a 2. Everything else after those decimals, they're just going to keep changing. And what are they going to keep changing to? They're getting closer and closer to this special, special number called the natural base, uh, represented with the letter E, and it is 
1828 dot 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 dot. It keeps going forever just like pi. It's an irrational number like pi. And uh, so the notation that's right up front, this is a limit definition. And that's basically what we were seeing in both the graph and looking at the pattern of the numbers is that it looks like it's approaching some number. What numbers are getting closer and closer to? And that's what it is. And with asymptotes, it never gets there until infinity. And, you know, the problem with trying to get to infinity. So uh, it's, I don't know if this was a little bit of, um, like, conceit on his part, but the, the guy who gave it the name, not necessarily the guy who uh, discovered it, but the guy who gave it his name is Euler. Perhaps you've heard that guy's name before. So uh, I don't know if he's naming it after himself or whatever, but uh, also called the Euler number. And this is such a special number, like pi, it's a transcendental number. And what that means is that there's no algebraic, or uh, I should say there's no polynomial equation that you can solve in order to get E, uh, just like you can't do that for pi. So there's that tattoo I was telling you about. E to the I pi plus one is equal to zero. Go ahead, plug it into your calculator if you wanted to test it out. Um, and people think that it's pretty sweet and pretty cool, cool enough to tattoo yourself with because it has, it's a formula that, um, that has all of the fundamental mathematical concept, uh, constants in it. Um, I think it's pretty cool, but I'm, I don't think I'm gonna tattoo it to my body. Okay, so let's, whenever you are, you have E in expression, you treat it just like you would pi. So if you want an exact answer, you simplify it, you treat it kind of like a variable or whatever. Um, so on number one, we're simplifying this expression e to the ninth times e to the sixth. I'm not, you know, trying to uh, get an approximate number what this is. I'm just treating that like it's an x value. Same base, I add the exponents e to the 15th power. That's all that's asking to do. Okay. Over here on number two, we're going to divide. So first divide the numbers. So uh, 60 divided by 12, that's a 5. And now whenever you have like bases, you subtract the exponents, so e to the fifth power. So that's a piece of cake. All right, what about uh, approximating these things? And, and I wanted to approximate these particular ones just simply because uh, if you're going to graph this, those are the ones that you'd probably want to estimate on your graph. So the first one is e to the negative one power. So let's call up this calculator here. And e to the clear. Okay, there's two different e buttons on this calculator. The first one, it is second, and then it says ln. We'll find out that means natural logarithm uh, in the future. But right up above that, it says e to the x power, and it puts a little place for you to put the power, so negative 1. Hit enter. What? 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 Okay, go to. I must have hit subtraction instead of that. Yeah, of course. Okay, so point. I'm going to round this to just, if I'm going to put this on a graph, there's no way I can get all that accuracy. So I'm just going to round that to, say, 0.4. Okay, so 0.4. All right, let's do it for E. Well, we already saw what E was. So E, I'm going to say, is about 2.7. It's 71828, so I'm going to go about 2.7. A little bit below the 3 mark if you put that on a graph. And then how about 2 squared? Well, or 2 squared, e squared. e is a little bit smaller than 3, so 3 squared would be 9. It's got to be somewhere less than 9. Let's, let's see that on the calculator here. Um, so I, before I do, the other place where there's an e, I believe, is right above the division sign. That one doesn't have an exponent on it. It just has the e. And uh, yeah, there you go. So uh, that stops at the last 1828. Does that mean that that's all the decimals there are? Nah. Anyway, so uh, let's go with the other one, e to the x, and make that a 2. And let's round that to the tenths place and say it's about 7.4. About 7.4. OK. All right, then. All right, then. So then. Um, the natural base, we can use that e in, as the base of an exponential function. And when you do, it's called the natural base exponential function. Huh, what a nice name. Okay, so 
it's y equals a, or we can do some scaling with it, times e to the rx. e is the base, it's that 2.718 blah 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 stuff. And then r is the exponent, and the, that r value, depending on what it is, is going to determine if this is an exponential growth or decay function. So on the right hand side here, if your r value is positive, if it's a positive number, this is going to be exponential growth. And the reason why is because, well, we looked at it before, if your base is bigger than 1, then it's always exponential growth. So uh, e to any positive power is going to be bigger than 1, and so you have an exponential growth equation. Okay, over here on the left hand side, on the green side, it's exponential decay if your r value, your exponent, so basically this is the rate, um, if it's less than zero, if it's a negative number. And here's the reason why. If I, if, like I saw in the previous example, if I have this e to the negative one power, it's a negative exponent, then this essentially means one over e, which now is a fraction between zero and one, so it's an exponential decay function. Okay, you wrap your brain around that? Okay. So here are the two, well, it's, it's basically the same parent function, just one flipped over the y-axis. So the exponential growth, let's look at the one on the right-hand side, very unconventional. Exponential growth, just basically y equals e to the x, the parent function, y equals e to the x. So, of course, uh, the y-intercept is going to be 1. You plug 0 in there, you get 1. All right, now, to the first power, it's going to be 1 comma e, so approximately 2.718. Okay, if I plugged 2 into that formula, just as we saw on that previous exercise or that previous example, um, that's 2.7, yeah? No, 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 7.4, ah, oh, man, like I remember, 7.4, there we go, 7.4. So on the flip side of it, if the exponent is negative, then we have a decay function, and so everything is just basically flipped over the um, x-axis. The, the y-axis, if you can see this. So uh, still at the zero power, on my y-intercept is one. And then to the first power, if this thing is negative already, it's basically to the negative one power, and there's that 0.368, right, 0.4-ish or whatever. Okay, exponential growth, exponential decay.